Hello and welcome back to the all new NRLW weekly podcast with me, Marley Silva, and NRLW legend Ruan Sims, thanks to Light and Easy fueling women in sport. On the show today, Ru's wrap of the NRLW round that just finished. $200 million has been announced by the federal government to support women's sports. So we asked the question of what that's going to do. And Canberra Raiders star and Wallaroo, Grace Kemp, joins the show. Rue, as always, it's a pleasure to be beside you. How has your week been? And how was the last round of NRLW we just saw? Good. Thanks, Marley, and everyone at home. It's been been great. It was another good round of football. We saw some great results. Uh, and we saw some really great games of footy too. A lot mm. of skill on display, which I think I feel like I say every week. Yeah. But I uh, just want to drive that point home. <laughs> Loving it. Loving that there's five games of NRLW every weekend that we can consume yes. without fail yeah. on uh, free-to-wear, which is even yeah. better. Uh, yeah, so I mean, a great one. But, yeah. yeah, let's get cracking on today's show. Absolutely. Well, we always start with the hardest questions mm. for you, which is oh. picking your top player, your top moment from this last round. I know. I'd noticed that you guys have clipped me back from top three. Yes. So I'm obviously <laughs> taking too long. So, but I've had a work around today. <laughs> I've got a tie. Yeah, okay. <laughs> my, my top player. Jordan's just like, oh, God, here we go. <laughs> uh, so tied, I have uh, Mariah Denman oh, and yeah. Tamika Upton. Mm. Both from the same game. Yep. I thought both for their respective teams were fantastic. It's the best game I've seen Mariah Denman probably ever play. And mm. she's a good player, mm. but that is the most work I've seen her get through. And she just popped up everywhere. Was Do you creating think she was so many opportunities? She was middle. very much fueled by the, her first try in the NRLW from the week before it seemed because she came yeah. out how many run meters? Something ridiculous. Oh, ridiculous run meters. She, but it wasn't just that, it was her push support. Mm. She had a number of line breaks as well. But I just felt like we were continuously calling her name as yeah. the game went. And I think she really did her best alongside Ali Brinshaw was fantastic for the Bronx as well. Mm. But but alongside Ali, the two of them were just trying to get the Bronx over the line. Yeah. So, and then obviously Tamika Upton, oh, yeah. she was yet again proving why she is a premier fullback absolutely. and one of the best players in the game. She mm. was absolutely outstanding for the Knights. Just her ability to turn pace from zero to a hundred mm. is incredible. And she can slip through the smallest of gaps. You <laughs> give her a half sniff and she's gone. Uh, but then just how brave she is under the high ball mm. and I actually really watch, I love watching her when she catches it and she knows that there's a defensive line there and she just powers up and speeds up into contact. So fantastic. So yeah. both of them were my tide mm. for uh, the top player of the weekend. Yeah. Uh, and yet again, I've done another tie for the best game moment. Uh, obviously the Sharks had a really good win mm. away from home. Big yep. travel. They had some issues with travel on the way up as well as on the way back. Yep. Uh, but for them to put on 40 points, I think that was a really good sign for the Sharks. And then obviously Jesse yeah. Southwell with the uh, the winner on the buzzer and the lead up try by Shanice Parker yeah. to level it up. Yeah. was fantastic. And honourable mention to Shanice Parker as well. I thought she, she did a, a massive job on yeah. Mele Hufanga, but I was only allowed to pick two. Sorry, Shanice. <laughs> well, I do have to say with Jesse's um, conversion right at the end there, it's the la the largest NRLW crowd that uh, McDonald Jones Stadium's ever seen. Yes. It was, yeah. Um, one had of, over 20,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was 17, the official number was 17,043 um, by the end of the NRLW match. And the way that that crowd was lifting that team home, like it gave me goosebumps. I was right there on the sideline and I was so happy watching Jessie also jump up and down when yeah. she got it. It was unbelievable. You know, it was even funny. During the call, Freddie said, if she kicks this, all the Newcastle fans are going to lose their heads. There's just going to be heads just rolling around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and sure enough. They sure yeah. did. Also, I just I want to give a shout out mm. to the DJ at McDonald Jones Stadium yeah. on uh, for that game. Your soundtrack playlist was very good. Top shelf. Makes a difference. Send it through. <laughs> Love it. Share the it. link. Loved it. Good. Now, some really exciting news mm. that's come out of um, from the federal government. There is a $20 million fund that has been announced that's going to give girls – this is how it's been described. It's going to give girls the same chance as boys at a professional sporting career. Um, we, this is all off the back of the Matilda's effect, as mm -hmm. we've been describing mm it. And it includes a plan to um, guarantee – more free-to-air broadcast of women's sports, yes. but also on a grassroots level, making better facilities um, and just 
more resources mm. for, for younger girls in a whole range of different sports. Mm. What did you think when you heard this? Well, straight away I thought this is fantastic. This is fantastic. And again, like you, you touched on the Matildas effect. Mm. And, you know, also if it wasn't for media around the game as yeah. well, you know, being so willing to put the Matildas front and centre and then off the back of that, the Matildas just continue to go from strength to strength. Mm. It has done huge things for women's sport not just in Australia, but across the world. Yeah. I think we, we really showed how if you provide really good media coverage and opportunities for women's sport, the return on that, I mean, we spoke yeah. about this last week, the return on that is immense. Yes. So, yeah, I think I think it's a really, it's a great start. Yeah. It's a really great start. Obviously, they're, you know, 200 million. There's questions around how, over how many years, yeah. uh, you know, obviously there is a four person panel that will make the decisions on where, and it's a pretty impressive panel. I yeah. think you've got the, the list of names. Yeah. There, so four former athletes, absolute, yeah. um, legends Stars of, the of, game, yeah. of their so respective sports. Basketball superstar, Lauren Jackson, mm -hmm. netball legend, Liz Ellis, Maddie Di Rosario and Tal Karp, who is a former Matilda. As well. Um, they, I think it's great. I, I did see the sports minister actually come out and say it was really important to a point athletes who could empathise, who have lived experience in this space. I think also just athletes who understand what it's like at a grassroots yeah. level and understand from an athlete's perspective what you need. Exactly. What you need to be successful, you know. So it's very easy for someone who's an administrator to come in and say, well, we're doing this, this and this. But yeah. then you know, on the coalface, yeah. the athletes are, oh, hang on, we actually need X, Y, Z, not yeah. this, this. So I think that's really important. That's too. a really good way, I think, to go about it. Mm. Uh, I tend to agree with, like you said, this is the beginning mm. of it. $200 million sounds like a lot of money when you break it down and we're not 100% sure on what the criteria looks like. We're assuming it'll be sort of bodies, say, like an a Athletics New South Wales applying for yep. or like – um, groups like that that would be applying for little bits of money. So it'll be interesting to see how that unfolds. But you just hope that this momentum that we're seeing from the top down um, to invest in this uh, women's sport and to invest in – I particularly like the focus on making sure that young girls feel that they belong in sporting spaces because we know mm. the highest dropout rate of – um, young people when it's it comes to sport. Early teenage Early teenage girls. Yeah, and it's girls. Yep. And it's girls. 100%. So yeah. they need to know that they're welcome in a in a footy club, in a soccer club, whatever it hmm. is. Or just that they have opportunity yeah. in those spaces. Like They might not end up wanting to stay as players, but yeah. then they stay in sport through other avenues. They could be referees. Yeah. They could be trainers. They yeah. could be S&C. They become coaches. And you the know, benefits. There's all these different things involved. And the benefits even for social sport is, first of all, um, this next generation are the loneliest generation that mm. we've ever seen. But also for young girls, it's really beneficial to your body image. If oh, you yeah. are someone who is focused on the fun elements of being active and um, being strong and, and mm. all those sorts of things that help you perform better, we know that that has that psychological element. Well, it's it's so good for your mental well-being. Yeah. <clears throat> Physical activity is so good for your mental well-being. Yeah. And then being involved, especially, and not not discounting individual sports because that is also incredibly important yes. and it's a different driver to team yeah. sports. But being involved, even as an individual athlete, you're still part of a club yeah. and you still have people around you as a team that work for you. So mm. it's a community yes. and you have support for things other than sport yeah. as well. And that is super important. Yeah. All positive things. It's a great yeah. story. I'm, I'm excited. excited. More's gonna more's gonna come in this space. And I, I think I think that's a great thing. And yeah. we're only going to see women's sport in Australia just skyrocket Absolutely. after what the Matildas have been able to do over the last six weeks. I love it. Now, back to the footy. The Roosters mm. come out hard again over the weekend. Yes. Are we thinking they are the ones to beat? I think we always thought that. Yes. From, from the get-go. Like their roster is impressive. Uh, the way they play their footy is impressive. I think I, think I might have spoken about this last week. The, the Raiders showed the blueprint on mm. how you can beat them. The Sharks were able to do it for 25 minutes mm. but then fell away. So this is the this is the thing with the Roosters. You can well you know what all of these players are going to do. You know how good they are, you know all of these things, but you still have to stop it and you yeah. still have to maintain your level of game mm. going into it. And this is where the Roosters are so dangerous because if you give them half a sniff, they will just take everything from you. Mm. So and that's like I love that about this yeah. outfit because sometimes if they do get a little bit 
rocked or they get a little bit unsure, you can just see they don't panic. They stay in their system and they're like, it's all right. We'll, we could, we'll just wait for our moment. We'll wait for our moment. And they pounce on that moment and then it's just all systems go off the back of it. So yeah. they've got such a great blend of hard workers in the middle along with superstars out wide, Jess Sergis, Izzy Kelly. Yeah. You know, Corbin Bax has been having a great season, mm. first game, but first season back since having her son. Yeah. So, yeah, like they just have class everywhere. And Taryn Aiken is really, really becoming a very dominant Absolutely. player for this tricolours outfit. So, yeah, there's there's plenty to love. Plenty to love about the Roosters. I think that target on their mm. back is only getting bigger. You're listening to the all-new NRLW Weekly Podcast with Marley Silva and Ruan Sims. Thanks to Light and Easy, fueling women in sports. And we'll be right back after the break. Light and Easy have been named Best Healthy Meal Delivery Service again. But you won't find us stopping to celebrate. We're busy making it easy for Aussies to achieve their well-being goals. And the results speak for themselves. Light and Easy, just good food and great results. And this week on NRLW Weekly, we are joined by rugby union convert, an absolute killer on the field for the Raiders this season, Grace Kemp. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing down there in the nation, uh, nation's capital? Hey, um, thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, cold today, but yeah, ripping into training tonight in the cold with the girls. Looking forward to it. Yes, certainly you guys are quite used to that. Now, Rue, I know you've been loving watching Grace out mm, there. I have. Yes. We love seeing you come across uh, from Rugby Union. And that's the first thing that I wanted to ask you about is what's that transition been like? We've seen a few girls come from the sevens format and now a, a couple from the 15s as well. We've seen you play for the Brumbies in the Super W and you've also represented the Wallaroos. What's the biggest difference? Um, I guess I'm just lucky enough to be put into a side with such talented athletes. Um, the girls have helped me along the way so well and just picking up little skills here and there. Um, the contact's so different, it's so much higher than what I'm used to. Um, but yeah, a lot more ball running, which I'm loving and yeah, just lo lo loving getting the ball in my hands and just ripping on the field with the girls. It's really cool. Now, speaking of the Wallaroos, uh, they posted an open letter earlier this week to Rugby Australia, which I thought was incredibly brave and you know, just reading it as well. Obviously, I've been involved as a Wallaroo in the past. Um, the support that you get at the Raiders, obviously, is fantastic because I, I've been down there. I've seen the Centre of Excellence. And can you just, you know, talk to us about both of those and, and you know, you don't, don't feel like you have to compare them, but, you know, can you talk to us about what's happening with the Wallaroos at the moment? Um, yeah, so like the girls have come together, which is awesome to see, and they've created that statement, I guess, get a better backing from Rugby Australia. Um, the coaching staff and everyone involved in the Wallaroos as a whole are amazing, and, but they need that backing to be able to support the girls fully. Um, but yeah, they need change now. And I guess we're all sick of hearing that change is coming and it needs to happen now for them to be able to be athletes and to be able to be in that high performance space. Um, at the Raiders, yeah, I'm like to be able to be an athlete, to go into that centre of excellence and train, recover properly. Um, we get physio properly, we get um, blood tests done day, like monthly, just to check in on our health. And that's the difference between the both. We're supported off the field as well as on the field. Um, and that's where the big gap falls, and that's definitely a gap that needs to be filled. Um, so, yeah, the girls are coming together and making a stand, which is awesome to see. And that full-time staffing as well, that, that's a massive thing because if you have full-time staff that can help monitor you and then can do that, can give you that physical uh, checkup that you need, the wellness checkup that you need on a consistent basis and then having high-quality coaching consistently as well, it makes a massive difference, doesn't it? And that's what the Wallaroos are asking for as well. Yeah, so everything from performance, through to health, they all come together to create the perfect athlete. So the fact that the girls are taking a stand for that, they're backing our coaches um, and support staff. And it's, I guess it's pushing the support staff to know that they are backed by the players, but they just need that backing from Rugby Australia. 
Mm. Like Rue said when she was describing you guys making the decision to put out that open letter, it is quite brave and it does feel it's reflective of the moment that we're living through. There's been so much conversation about the shift that the Matildas have forced, you know, making these conversations come to the forefront of our minds in the sporting landscape. For you on an individual level as a dual code athlete, um, a, a woman who, who's trying to make a full-time career out of footy, how do you feel about this moment and particularly the, some of the responses that you've seen from the public since um, being a part of making this statement? It makes me so proud to be a female athlete. Um, I guess being in different levels of the sport, you get different levels of support. Um, but I, I've been lucky enough to see all of those levels and soon enough they won't be different levels. It'll just be a broad spectrum of support um, and that's that's what the Matildas have shown us, I guess. Um, it was amazing watching them and it only grows the women's audience more and more as women go live on TV and more articles get put out. It, it just brings it all together and yeah, that's, that's really what they're pushing for, I guess. And Rugby Australia's response, I think it came out yesterday, that they're uh, appointing a head of women's high performance uh, Jamie, Jamie Fernandez, who was head of the rowing high performance, do you feel like that is a step in the right direction? Yes, yeah, so I'm actually friends with his daughter. Um, so that was a big surprise to me to see that he'd been appointed. Um, I guess it is a big step. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing how that affects the girls and how it ties everyone together. Um, but yeah, I guess it is a step in the right direction. And just for them to be able to get that high performance manager, it just shows that they are listening. That they still need to do a bit more to support those girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, back to this NRLW season, uh, you guys down there in Canberra, certainly having a red hot crack in your inaugural season in the NRLW. I did see in an interview that you did a couple of weeks ago, you were saying that your favourite two ever, uh, your two favourite ever games that you've played when it comes to footy have both happened this season playing for the Raiders, yeah. which I love. And you've already talked about what it's like to play with such um, amazing talent in, in your teammates and the like. Um, but, you know, having the leadership of, of someone like Samima Taufa, Zahara Tamara, yeah, what is that like? It does seem like you guys have built a really good culture down there. It's amazing. Um, I've never been part of a group like it. Um, I've had leaders like Shannon Parry and she's amazing and then to be able to have a different type of leadership from Samai Matalfa and Z, I, I just feel like I've had the best of both worlds and I'm loving every second of it. Um, but yeah, my favourite games have been at GIO and I love the crowds in Canberra and um, it's special to hear how people travel to watch us. So yeah, looking forward to more of that. Now, I have to ask you, I'm sure you've been asked this a thousand times already, but how did you feel when you had your first home ground Viking clap? Like, what did it do? Did you get goosebumps? Were you just like, because I was there for one of them and I had the best time. I got to do it in the crowd and I was so pumped. I could stop talking about it. <laughs> um, we were under the tunnels and we heard it and we were just like, what is going on? Like, this is so amazing. Um, we had like different camera crew down there with us and I think they even stopped for a second to listen to it, which was really awesome to see. But then running out into that crowd and hearing it and seeing everyone doing it, it's just a different level of excitement, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I've experienced it as well. It made, made me get a bit emotional, which seems ridiculous when you see one. I was ready to run out there. I was like, oh, come, 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 come with you guys. Come on. <laughs> One of the great things I think as a fan that I'm loving with the NRLW competition is how tight it is. Every week we don't know, you know, what the results are going to be. With that first home game that you guys had, uh, the Roosters went in as favourites and you got on top, I think partly due to the Viking clap. But how do you see this competition? Is there any particular team that you think is the biggest threat that you want to, you know, keep an eye on as you get towards the back end of the season? Um, I guess we've had a really good run at home. We had our first away win a few weeks ago. Um, but, yeah, we're just working every week. I guess we watch and review different teams. And it's not like they have their standout players, but they're all amazing together. And that level of footy that we're playing here is second to none. Um, 
all the teams keep growing each week and I guess they're combining a bit more than what they were at the start of the season, which is really exciting to see. Um, and it just gives us a great a great game to go up against. Um, but, yeah, looking forward to these Queensland games. It should be a bit of hot weather up there for us girls that are used to the cold. Um, but, yeah, just excited to play more and more footy. Do you find, like, your coach, Darren Borthwick, he has a, a big history in strength and conditioning. Do you feel like he's, and along with the rest of the team, have got you guys in the best possible shape? That's why you're playing good footy because you don't have to think about your fitness. You just get out there and just think about the footy. Yeah, I guess so. He works really well with our s Benny. Um, they both bring different types of s Benny has such a rugby union background and is so used to league so I guess it's a really good combination of um, I guess footwork and long distance running that we've been doing so yeah I feel fit on the field um, and I'll come off for a break and go back on so yeah it's nice to have that break. That's always nice isn't it? Have a little rest. <laughs> Uh, so you do have the Broncos this weekend. They've been finding some really strong form. I mean, as like you've said, so many of the teams have. Is there anything in particular in their game that you'll be targeting? They have some really good ball runners, um, some strong carriers, and they like to hit it out wide after a few sets. So I guess that's what we'll be watching with our defence. Um, but, yeah, just excited to go up against some great athletes. And the final question I have to ask, you are enjoying being a Raider so much and you've played, you've come across from a different code. Can we expect you to be an NRLW girl for a long time? Oh, no pressure. Um, I am loving it. I'm keeping my doors open at the moment, but yeah, I'm really loving league at the moment. So yeah. We like hearing that. Yes, sure. we do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming and sharing your perspective on, on some big topics here today, Grace. We're loving watching you out there on the field, absolutely tearing it up and good luck for the rest of the season. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. That was so great to hear from Grace. I have yeah been loving watching she her. So well. She does. She and so well. yeah, articulated that situation with the Wallaroos in mm. a way that I think is really, you know, pointing to the tangible things they're asking for. Mm. Like we said, you Absolutely. know, this moment, the Matildas effect, this kind these mm. kinds of conversations are really positive for the women's game yeah. across codes, I think. Yeah. Now our listeners have been sending in more questions because they just need to hear more from you, Ruth. Oh, these always throw me, these questions. <laughs> like, oh. The first one I've got for you today is from Jake. Jake asks, hey, Ru, who was your toughest competitor when you were playing and who do you think is the toughest competitor in the game today? They like to ask you hard ones. <laughs> yeah, this, this is a tough one. Uh, probably, look, probably one of the toughest players I ever played against and I'm picking her not solely because I've never actually played football with her. I've mm. only ever played against her. Uh, Ronna Peters. Okay. Yeah. She is aggressive mm. and tough and she's built low to the ground and she hits like a freight train <laughs> and she runs like a steam train and it is really hard to stop her. Mm. Uh, and she's a competitor. Like yeah. She just would compete for absolutely everything. And mm. uh, she has had a very decorated career in rugby league. And, yeah, she was probably the toughest mm. person that I played against. And like I said, I'd, I never played footy with her, so I only ever played against her. Right. So uh, that's why I'm, I'm going with Ronna. Yeah. And probably today the toughest toughest competitor it's hard to go past Samaima Tolfa oh yeah it's really hard like you we'd, we'd have training sessions and she'd almost break a leg <laughs> and then two days later she's you know player of the match in in the game so oh. yeah she's uh, she's probably the toughest one going around today. yeah <laughs> um and the other question is from Mary mm. who asks are there any current players in the game who you could see making a transition into coaching yeah, there is. There's there's a lot of players mm. actually that I think that would make really good coaches in the future. Um, and probably the one that springs to mind most clearly is probably Ali Brigginshaw. Yeah. She'd probably be a really great and easy transition, especially mm. if you got her in as a specialist coach to start mm. with, and then she can learn her trade and, yeah. and, and go from there. So that's the one that springs to like, front of mind when yeah. I... I think who could make that transition to coaching. Mm, very interesting. Good knowledge. Good footy. Well, we don't want her to stop IQ. playing footy anytime soon. Don't, but you're not, Ali. Don't we won't listen be to losing anybody. Her. You keep playing until you're ready to retire. Yeah, yeah. Let everyone tell you different. <laughs> all righty. Now we have round six in the NRLW mm. to preview. And you can watch all five of the, 
these games live and free on Nine and Nine now. Get around it. The footy just keeps getting better and better. Our first game of this round on Saturday at uh, Jubilee Stadium mm. in Sydney. We will see the Eels and the Cowboys face off. Rue, what should we be looking out for? Yeah, uh, it's a double header too. Yeah, at Jubilee. So this will be uh, this will be a good day of footy. Uh, I think the Cowboys. They're in a tough spot at the moment. Mm. Uh, Shania Power yeah. potentially out for the season, as is Autumn Rain Stevens Daly yeah, really out sad. for a season with the ACL. So I'm really sorry to mm. hear that, Autumn. Always. Uh, Shania, I hope that it's not the season for you. Mm. But uh, if it is, I'm really sorry to hear that because yeah. both of them have been very, very strong Absolutely. for the new franchise. Uh, so I think the Cowboys, they're going to do it tough mm. because I think both of those players add so much punch. So for the Eels, from the Eels' perspective – this is their big opportunity now yeah. because the Cowboys have been so strong to start mm-hmm. this season. Both teams coming off a loss last week. Obviously, I thought the, the Eels was probably one of the best games I've seen them play all year yeah. against the Raiders. They really took it to them. They, yeah. they never took a backward step. Mm-hmm. So I'm expecting, uh, you know, especially Rachel Pearson, when we saw her take control of the game last week, things started to happen for yeah. the Eels. So definitely I think that is a massive focus for them. They need to make sure that she's getting good clean ball mm-hmm. and that she can be creative off the back of it. So uh, obviously for the Eels, Jade Fonua comes yeah. back as well. And, uh, yeah, I think this is going to be a tough one. I, I'm i actually – I'm going to tip the Eels. Okay. I'm going to tip the Eels for this one. I think this is their opportunity. Abby Church has been outstanding. Oh. We're well, talking about a tough player, my goodness. Yeah, she is tough. She is so tough and she's so slight mm. and she just never takes a backward step. So, Absolutely. Yeah, I think uh, I think this is this is the opportunity for the Eels to get a win up. Okay. Get their first win of the season. All right, we'll see how mm. that goes. And then straight after that, yep, with this double header, the second game at Jubilee mm. on Saturday will be the Dragons and the Titans. Now, the Dragons really held on last week they and did. were, you know, gutsy in their performance. The Titans – have been super strong. Mm. Do you think um, the Dragons could take it to them? I think they can take it to them. Uh, I think it was. it's a good sign that Bobby Law has been mm. named. Hopefully that hamstring uh, is not too bad because yes. I think her and um, Tyler Nathan Wong have been – creating something really special on that left edge for mm. the Dragons. So, And then off the back of that, obviously, Tegan Berry is able to get to work through. She pops up through the middle. She slides on each edge. She's so quick. So, uh, yeah, I think I think the Dragons can really – and it's a home game for the Dragons yeah. too. So the first, first one at Jubilee this year yep. for them because yep. they've been playing at Wynn. Yes. So this is the first game in at Cogra for, for the Dragons. So mm. I think uh, – they're up against it though because yes. Jamie Chapman's back. She is. Jamie Chapman is back uh, and Vanny Polite is difficult to stop yep. <laughs> at the best of times. <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> to say the least. But, uh, you know, the, they've had you know, some, a little bit of a tough road. Yeah. The Titans, they did a lot of travel. They had some mm-hmm. big wins against a lot of adversity and they've had a lot of travel. Yeah. So I think that's probably why we've seen them be a little bit tired. Yeah you know, the last week or two. But I I think they're gonna um, they're gonna come back really, really hard mm. here. So the Dragons have the opportunity. I'm still tipping the Titans. Yes. Though. Yeah. I'm still tipping the Titans for this one, even though I think this this one is going to go down to the wire. And yeah, I, I believe that we'll see Ray McGregor's fingerprints. If the if the Dragons win, her fingerprints need to be all over this game. Yeah. Hundred percent. And I think Sal is also he's brought Maddie Weatherall back in. Okay. So I think they missed her bit of punch. Mm. I, I, I understand the week before she did do some poor misses mm-hmm. early. Yeah. But uh, I think the week off will give her time to figure all that out and then she'll come out ready and firing. Okay. So you're, you're back in the I'm Titans I'm backing the here. Titans. I think yeah. this is a close I think it's going to be a, a really good contest, but mm. I tend to think the Titans will get on top here as well. Mm. And then our third game on Saturday at Allianz Stadium, part of a doubleheader with the men's uh, Roosters game, will be the Roosters and the Tigers. Roosters in red hot form. Mm, they what, are. What are we thinking with this one? Yeah, look, the Roosters are absolutely flying. And I think the Tigers are buoyed by the return of Lasana Lutu. Mm-hmm. So she's starting in at seven and, and M Curtin is out. But I'm assuming it's through injury that she's out yeah. because she has been scrambling so hard. She sure has. Over the last few weeks, especially with Lutu being out injured. So I think she's really stepped up and, and she's developed her game 
in such a short period of time. Mm-hmm. She's picked it up another notch. So hopefully she's all right because yep. I think they're a better side when they have both her and Lasana yeah. uh, in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then again, you know, I look at the the forward pack of the Tigers and Sala Tonga Tuki has been incredibly dominant. Yeah. Christian Pio has been so fantastic. Like her offload game really helps as, as well as Nevada George. And then off the back of that, Ebony Pryor is finding a lot of joy through the middle. Yeah. So I think they will test the middles of the Roosters. I think they will continue to push them. But then you look at you know, the Roosters middle yeah. pack and they are incredibly dominant. And Absolutely. Like Millie Boyle gets through a ton of work every yeah. time she takes the field. And Keely Davis is a very crafty nine. Mm. And then she'll then slot into pl- ball playing lock yeah. when Shorten Burton comes on. So they've got plenty of strike, they do. the tricolours. And that's why they're so dangerous and difficult to contain because they have players who can play multiple positions mm. and they're very good at multiple positions. Yeah. So I think this is a this is a big test here for the Tigers. Yes. Really, really big test. Um and I think the Roosters will get the win at home. Yeah. I believe they will, but I believe it's going to be closer than people think. Yeah, I tend to agree. I think when we've seen the Tigers really find their flow, they've been really tough mm. competitors. Are we set to see Kezi Apps go four weeks in a row with a try? Yes. <laughs> I'm far out, I love watching no her cross the line. No it's pressure, the best. Kezi. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> and following that game, which, yeah, I'm sure will be – I mean, they've, they've all been so such great contests to watch, mm. I think, this whole season. But on Sunday, our first game will be up in Brizzy. We'll see Grace Kemp, who was uh, just talking to us earlier. Mm. Her Raiders coming up against the Broncos at home at Totally work, Workwear Stadium will not be easy. No, I, this could be the game of the round, Yeah, this one. So, you know, both of these clubs uh, have plenty of strike across the park. Uh, obviously, you know, Grace is starting mm. for this game, which is really cool. Yeah. Uh, normally we see her coming off the bench with that bit of pu- uh, punch. So it'll be interesting to see how she handles a, a starting mm. role because it is very different. Yeah. But I believe she's got the skill set to be able to do it. Uh, it is a big forward pack for the Broncos too. Yeah. Annette Anuasala, Brianna Clark, who's back as well. She brings a lot of uh, skill too, not mm. just that size. Uh, and then they've got that punch off the bench as well, like Lena Dutzi comes on. And yeah. I think not last week, week before, she probably had the best game I've seen her play yeah. all season. So she's got that offload. She's got that ability to sort of strip the ball and, and play off the back of that. And then... You know, Broughton and Brigginshaw are fantastic yeah. in that half. So And they'll be looking for some revenge after that tight loss against the Knights. Oh, last absolutely. Week. Yeah. Absolutely. And then yeah, but I honestly think the matchup to watch is the halves pairing. Yeah. Oh, and Julia Robinson's back, which I yes. think is great. That Thank is goodness. That I'm is a massive in. Yeah. Massive, massive in for them. So she is huge yeah. out the back. Yeah. Like, that hamstring injury since round one. Yeah. So we haven't seen her for ages, but yeah. in yardage especially, she's got such a good carry, very good under the high ball. So it's good to see her back. Uh, but yeah, the the halves pairing is that's that's the matchup to watch for me. I Absolutely. can't wait to see them get to work this week. Oh, that'll be a good one. Then our final game of the round is in Newcastle, mm. McDonald Jones Stadium. The Knights get another home game here up against the Sharks. I think this one's going to be really good as well. It is. They both had great wins last week. Yep. And as you were saying, Tamika Upton was your absolute, you know, your tired best player mm-hmm. of the round. Mm-hmm. She's mm-hmm. a superstar. But how good was Jada Taylor for the Sharks too? She was good. She was good on return. Uh, I think yeah, to start the game she looked a little bit like she was thinking about her mm. ankle but then once she warmed into her task you could tell she'd just completely forgotten about it and yep. she was just hitting that pace that we that we know out of her this is going to be a really good matchup because I think both teams are actually very similar mm-hmm. in the way they play so they do like to get at the tags they like to then punch a little bit and then just have a crack off yep. the back of it so this is going to be a really good game maybe Sunday can just be the day of the, the round yeah. of the day okay okay round of the day no yeah. day of, I don't, day of the round sense. day of the round I mean it's all great yeah, but day there's, of the good, there's day big of the games on Sunday yeah absolutely so I think this is uh this is going to be a tough one and like Taylor Predabon when she's been coming off the bench for the Knights she's been creating so much momentum for them she has been so good and then Nita Maynard off the back of that is able to get out create some opportunities Liv Higgins then pushes to yeah. lock and they, again, they are another team that has a really great rotation through there. So, yeah, I think this is going to be a really tough one. And I'm actually really looking forward to the matchup of the centres. Okay. This week, in, mm-hmm. in this game. Tiana Penetani and Anessa Biddle versus Shanice Parker and Abigail Roach. Yeah. 
I, I'm really excited mm. to see how these centre pairings go up against each other because yeah. they're all very similar but they're all very different at the same time. And I think that is, yeah, that, that's going to be one to watch. And then obviously out the back, Tamika and, and uh, Jada. So the Sharks middle have to stay connected because otherwise Tamika Upton will absolutely tear, it tear you apart. Yep. So, yeah, the middle needs to stay connected with their edges and, uh, you know, the Knights, well, we see what they do. The Caitlin Johnston starting in front row mm. as well. LaShawn Albert-Jones is starting on an edge and Yazzie Clydesdale on the other. And Yazzie Clydesdale, can she's another player who can in, just tear you apart as an individual. Yeah. So, yeah, there's, there's I feel like there's going to be plenty of big defence on show yeah. on Sunday in this game. And, I mean, the Knights were without Hannah Southwell last week. She was yes. so late out yep. having knocked her knee that she's injured previously. Yep. So she'll be, yeah, talk about defence. Oh. <laughs> and then, yeah, so her and Holly Wheeler yeah. Ooh, going up what against a each other in the locks position. So, yeah, that's that's what I mean about I think both of these teams are very similar in their makeup. And, yeah, this uh, Sunday. Yeah. Strap in. Strap in for all games on Sunday. Yeah. I love it. Clear your schedule. Yep. Sit down. Tune in. Tune in on Channel 9. Channel 9 and 9 now. Yep. And get ready for a big big round of NRLW. I'm already ready. Let's oh, I'm go. so excited. Let's I just go. want to do the weekend. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rue. As Thanks, always, Molly. your wisdom is just makes me feel even more excited for the weekend because now I know exactly what to look for. I'm pumped. I'm ready. I'm pumped. Let's go. Thanks for listening. Make sure you're subscribing wherever you're following the NRLW Weekly Podcast and we will catch you next week.